So today I'm going to demonstrate how to build a cash flow forecast using Excel. If you haven't done so already, then please take a look at the video that forms part one of this presentation, where I give an introduction. I've preloaded Excel with a model in various stages of completion in order to keep things moving along. I'd suggest you view this video in high definition to get the best picture. To do that, just click the little gear icon at the bottom right of the screen and then choose the highest definition from the drop, drop down list like this. Uh, and then you can view full screen in order to get uh, the best picture of all. So we start to build a model with a title for the spreadsheet and the first weekly column. We're going to do the forecast in 13 weekly buckets ending on a Saturday as that's a common business requirement. We're doing this in mid-August 2013 so the coming Saturday is the first date to include. We then allocate a few rows for receipts and a few rows for payments with a subtotal at the bottom of each one. Net cash flow is receipts minus payments. We have to put in a figure for the opening cash amount, whatever we've got in the bank account at the start of the week, I'm assuming that's 100,000. And then closing cash is the opening cash plus or minus the net cash flow for the week. Now we move on and enter our formulae for the second week. So the date is the previous week plus seven. Total receipts, total payments, net cash flow, we can all just copy across from the previous week. The opening cash for the week is the previous week's closing cash. And then the closing cash formula, again, we can just copy straight across from the previous week. Now we can copy all of our week two formulae all the way across to uh, column N to give us another 11 weeks. And um, that gives us the, the framework with all the formulae in for building up our model. Just need to widen these columns to make it uh, make the dates fit in and then add a bit of formatting just to make it look a little bit neater. And then we can start to enter some of our cash flow items. So starting on the income side on the receipts, um, I'm going to say first of all that we have £12,000 a week of cash sales including VAT. Then we want to look at our current debtors or receivables on the sales ledger and estimate a profile of when those are going to get paid. These often cluster around the end of the month, so I've reflected that in the, the profile here. Then we need to think about our sales forecast and see what business we have in the pipeline that's going to turn into cash before the end of the 13 week period. I'm calling that uninvoiced sales here. Uh, I need to have some discussion with the salespeople about what that profile is going to look like. I'm assuming I'm going to sell a fixed asset in this period, raising 75,000. And then there are always a few other sundry receipts. I'll put in a 1,000 a month for that. So that's all of the sales of the receipts entered. And uh, understandably, the cash balance looks quite healthy. So now let's go on and take a look at the payments side. I've got a weekly wages bill of 7,500. And monthly salaries are 30,000 payable at the end of each calendar month. So just drop those numbers into the, the right uh, weekly buckets there. Uh, remember these are net payments to employees. Uh, the payroll deductions, the tax, insurance, the pension, get paid over I'm assuming on the 19th of every month. Um, so I put those payments into the appropriate weeks. Uh, just worth pointing out that the first payment actually relates to last month's payroll. So now we have to look at payments to suppliers and follow a similar approach to what was done on the sales side. Firstly, what have we got on our purchase ledger, our accounts payable, that uh, is going to fall due over the period and uh, put in a profile for when that's going to be paid. I'm assuming here we do a, a monthly pay run at the end of the month with smaller amounts going out in between. Then again we have to make an estimate of what's not on the ledger which is going to be paid in the 13 week period. And again, come up with a, a weekly profile of where that's going to fall. Then need to add in direct debits where uh, suppliers or creditors are taking money directly out of our bank account without uh, initiating it. Uh, it's worth looking at these in some detail as um, it can take, they can be quite significant for some companies. But I'll put a, a profile in that for the, that type of payment. Uh, I need to add in a, a couple more lines as we're not quite finished with the payments yet. Uh, we've got VAT, uh, assuming our VAT quarter runs to 31st of August, so the bill will be payable on the 12th of October. I've put in a figure for 75,000 there. 
If you're not sure about how this works, then please take another look at the part one video where I explain this in a, in a bit more detail. Then again, we have some sundry other payments coming in on, the, on a single line. So that completes all our data entry for our cash flow and the, the formulas are calculated through at the bottom. Uh, most important to look at, thing to look at is the closing cash balance to see if we've got enough, uh, enough, keep enough money in the bank at all times. Just to highlight this, I'm just going to put a bit of conditional formatting on that row just to um, show up if the balance gets below zero. And uh, we can see from doing that that we have got a problem in the last couple of weeks where the bank account does go overdrawn. So without wishing to state the obvious to, to deal with this, I either need to increase my income, reduce my payments, or get some bank facilities approved with, uh, with the bank manager. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to assume that I've sat down with my salespeople and uh, on questioning, they're confident they can bring in a bit more income in October. So I've just adjusted the uninvoiced sales line here and uh, from 65,000 to 85 to 80,000. And we can see as we swap between the two versions, that makes the uh, overdrawn position disappear. Um, so obviously I would want to keep a, a close eye on, the, on those weeks and what's going to happen in that position as we work through the next few months. And that uh, completes the inputs and the assessment of our cash flow position. Now, um, good cash management discipline says that you should carry out this exercise every week. And once you've got this basic model set up, it's not too difficult to roll it forward for the next week, as most of the data in the middle won't change very much. All you need to do is just add on another column at the end, just copying all the formulae across, just widen that out a little bit. Um, adjust the second week, so just change that formula into an actual date. Just move that label over. And then you need to update the opening cash position with whatever the actual opening cash is for the week in question. So I'm just going to put a, a figure in there. Um, then we can delete the first week because that's, that's now in the past and the cash flow forecast is just about looking forward. And the model framework is updated. We can then review it and uh, make any changes that we need to to make a further assessment of where our cash position is. So that's how you pull a cash flow forecast together. I hope you found that useful. If you'd like a copy of this model or if you've got any questions or would like some more information on this subject, then please don't hesitate to get in touch via our website at www.prosperfd.com. Thanks for watching.